evening and welcome to Let's Talk with Lou. And this is Community Television Channel 27 and 73. Thank you for being here this evening. As always, I am always delighted to have guests uh, that are from our community that talk about pertinent information that affects you as a listening audience, as a Santa Cruz resident. And tonight, again, we've got a uh, very two very prominent uh, guests with us this evening. And one, of course, everybody knows uh, he's been around for a lot of years, and that's uh, Zach Friend, second uh, district county supervisor. Welcome, Zach, to the show. It's a pleasure to be back. Thanks for having me, Lou. Okay, thank you for being here. And we also have another guest, uh, and he is the uh, president and CEO at, of Advantage Homes of Santa Cruz, uh, and he is an ADU, accessory dwelling unit uh, expert, and uh, he's here to talk about all the particular details, and thank you for being here, Todd Sue. Thank you, Lou, for having us, appreciate it. Yeah, good to have you. His wife, uh, Cindy Sue, is in finance, and she's the co-owner of the company, uh, and we also have Cindy Hoffman, and she is the uh, Santa Cruz uh, manager uh, here in Santa Cruz, actually located in SoCal, so thank you for being with us, ladies. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. good. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about, thank you very much for being here, uh, all of you, um, a little bit about the ADUs, uh, what that stands for and how we define that. And it is the up and most uh, prominent thing that's happening in Santa Cruz County. And I think if, you've, if we've been to any meetings, uh, when, when Zach has been there, he talks about it as a county supervisor. Uh, I think it's near and dear to his heart. And it's certainly something that uh, is giving uh, a lot, getting a lot of attention uh, in the community, but also statewide. Um, and uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about, uh, about uh, Zach uh, as well as Todd and give a little bit about their background because you're going to know we're talking with some experts here. Um, Todd Sue, uh, again, the president and CEO of Advantage Homes, uh, a, a modular and ADU expert um, is the largest, uh, the owner of the largest retailer in California. Uh, very fortunate to have you uh, here and hardworking for sure. I'm sure you do a lot of traveling. Uh, it's great to have you uh, take the time that you've done uh, to be here this evening with over 14 offices throughout California, uh, including the Santa Cruz area, uh, specifically in Soquel, uh, with over 5,000 modular homes sold since you've been in uh, business, so you've been a busy man. Uh, over 23 years experience in the industry, winner of the MHI Retailer of the Year Award, uh, brings a lot, a lot of uh, presence into our community. And we're just so pleased to have you and bring that expertise uh, to our community. So thank you for uh, deciding to come here, and you've been here for a while anyways in Santa Cruz County. Um, and then let's talk a little bit about um, how there's gonna be a lot of crossover, I think, conversation and uh, what Zach does, and a little bit about his background, but certainly tonight we're gonna to talk about your expertise and what you bring to the table and all the specifics about ADUs. Uh, Zach has been a, a county supervisor for seven year, se several years, uh, second district, author and communications expert, who has served as a press secretary and spokesman on the multiple, uh, multiple presidential campaigns, and has worked as press information officer and a crime analyst uh, for law enforcement agency in Santa Cruz for uh, over a decade. Uh, experience working in the White House and the Council of Economic and Campaign Press Secretary. Uh, Zach has also handled all media and messaging, communication strategy, and media relationships uh, in the largest media markets in the battleground states. Um, this is in, uh, also includes a briefing for national campaign principals and surrogates and providing on the uh, on the record quotes for local, state, and national, international print, radio, and television media on behalf of several campaigns. Uh, I can go on and on, and I'll talk a little bit about a couple other things. I want to embarrass them. I want to turn them red a little bit. I've so, <laughs> uh, been quoted by MSNBC, Fox News, CNN, ABC, CBS, NBC, National Public Radio, Associated Press, uh, and a, a, a bunch of other places, uh, media, and Turner Publishing as well. Uh, is publish your book on message. Uh, exciting book. I started it, and uh, of course, after we started the show, you told me you would have given me a, a signed copy, and I wouldn't have sent away for an Amazon. I didn't show. promise a signed copy, just a discounted copy. Just a I mean, discounted. Let's be honest here, no, right? You yeah, said gonna, free. <laughs> I thought it was <laughs> yeah, well, free in different definitions. You know, different definitions. It's because it's pretty much in the free bin of the local bookstore at this point. But I, I appreciate you picking the book up. Yeah, good book. Thank you. Thank you for uh, spending all your time. And you write an article in one of the local newspapers as well, too. Uh, the Mid County Post? 
I do write uh, articles for some of the local publications, specifically about policies that are coming before the Board of Supervisors that might be of interest to the community. And one of the most common questions I get is, some, is how are we going to deal with the housing crisis? So it's definitely apropos of the discussion tonight. Excellent. Uh, I'm going to do something kind of uh, interesting, and we're going to talk about uh, both the commercial uh, and, and the administrative side. And that's where uh, both of you bring such uh, specialty to this ADU issue. But uh, Zach, let's start out uh, uh, with you, and, and let's let's talk about um, some of the things. First of all, what does a county supervisor do? And uh, we'll certainly tie that into the ADUs and housing and some of the uh, challenge that you have right now. But what does a county supervisor do, just in general and specific? So I, my job it can be uh, very different from even uh, other county supervisors that maybe just represent cities. For example, since I represent mainly the unincorporated area. I'm the primary government contact for people that live in the unincorporated area from everything from land use policy to uh, the budget that impacts those things to law enforcement to even serving on special districts such as uh, water or sanitation that may be something that they need. But the Board of Supervisors or counties are arms of the state and the Board of Supervisors, there's five in every county except for the, the city-county combination of San Francisco. And I think that our primary function throughout California would be seen as land use regulation. Uh, while we do provide frontline services, some of the biggest decisions we make really are focused on land use, including where and how to build housing, uh, the type of housing to build, and issues surrounding land use, such as water, transportation, et cetera. Okay. So the, the, the big thing in tying it uh, into ADUs uh, in terms of how uh, we go about uh, getting ADUs approved and what they are, uh, is sem definitely something that is a big interest to you because county supervisors are all about land use, predominantly uh, sure. about land use in the unincorporated areas. Could you talk about uh, your district? Uh, where does it go and where's, where are the limitations and where is District 2? My district basically is from uh, the city of Capitola to the Monterey County line. I do go up to the summit and, and have uh, parts of Watsonville, all of Coralitos, Rio del Mar, Aptos, La Selva Beach, and a number of other uh, wonderful areas in there. I have more agricultural land than any other a district in the county. I also have uh, both the oldest and youngest, demographically speaking, populations in different census tracts. I also have the lowest and highest unemployment rates, depending upon different census tracts. It's a very uh, geographically, economically, socioeconomically diverse district. And again, one of the underpinning components of concern is always housing. And, and I'm looking forward to hearing uh, an expert right here t uh, tell me what we're not doing enough of, because ADUs, or accessory dwelling units, sometimes called grand units in different uh, places, really are, in my opinion, the fastest, easiest way to build affordable housing uh, anywhere in the city or in a county area. And it's something that our counties work very hard to change the regulatory framework for uh, to ensure that we can help incent uh, the construction of more ADUs across the county. What are some of the biggest challenges uh, that you see in the county right now, the housing crisis challenges uh, that can be addressed through ADUs? How do you see those two uh, elements working together to start to uh, uh, circumvent and bring some of those uh, challenges to uh, conclusion, conclusion, or at least minimize them? Well, you know, the housing crisis touches a lot of elements of society. First, I think we can take a step back and say that the state of California, even though I, I recognize that people that, that have lived here for a while have seen a lot of change, realistically has not built enough housing in order to deal with even just standard population growth. As a result, especially in coastal California like Santa Cruz County, uh, prices have skyrocketed and a lot of families are really struggling as a result. But there are a number of other things that get impacted by it. Businesses can't rec recruit employees because they can't find housing or they can't retain employees. Uh, nurses, doctors, teachers, police officers, I mean, they're leaving this, com this community uh, in pretty significant numbers and then we're having to pay more and more for those that want to stay, which strains local budgets. A lot of this goes back to simply the cost of housing. As housing goes up, so too do Local businesses have to charge more in order to pay their employees more, so service prices go up, and you can see this becomes uh, sort of a never-ending cycle. Accessory dwelling units are one of the quickest and fastest ways, in my opinion, to build affordable housing, and also to allow for people that maybe want to age in place uh, to move into an accessory dwelling unit while their family moves into the front unit, grandparents that want to take care of grandkids, families that want to stay closer together. Uh, you can get one entitled and built a heck of a lot faster than I can get a 20-unit apartment complex built uh, in Santa Cruz County. I could get 20 ADUs built uh, within weeks, quite frankly, is through the process, uh, not the construction process, but every other process. But it would take five years at least 
to get through an entitlement and financing side to build the same number of units in, a, in an apartment world. So I think it, it's, it's not the only solution. I mean, I don't want to overstate it, mm -hmm. but it is a significant component and, and, a, and a now component that can be uh, plugged into uh, to help address the housing crisis, not just in Santa Cruz County, but across the state of California. So ADUs in terms of coming into the county and being much more popular, I mean, the buzz right now are, are ADUs. Uh, and uh, I think that, you know, if you've been here long enough, as I have, uh, you realize that one of the biggest challenges for sure, just an individual to come into uh, uh, Santa Cruz County uh, and to stay here is housing. Uh, and I know on some of the other, uh, some of the boards that I uh, serve on, I know even bringing in uh, medical doctors to come into Santa Cruz County after, you know, they've been to medical school for uh, four years, they've been there and they've got, you know, a lot of uh, a debt. And they don't change that, they don't make that debt go over 30 years, amortize it, it's usually uh, five or 10 years. So they've got some significant debt as, as uh, medical doctors uh, uh, traditionally get paid pretty well. And we, we pay them pretty well here, but not only to keep, uh, bring them here, but, uh, but to keep them uh, here. And we run into the same kind of issues, I think, at, uh, at Cabrillo College, where we've got some of the, uh, the, one of the finest colleges, I believe, uh, in the state of California. And we've got hygienists and nurses and uh, fire professionals, and they're coming out making pretty good money. And, and yet, even if they've got a, a dual income, they can't afford, traditionally, uh, uh, they can't afford to, to buy unless they've got some other thing happening with their family and their family does something for them. But this seems to, the ADU seems to address that issue because uh, it, the, the housing could be, uh, uh, first of all, streamlined and approved quickly, but also made less expensively, uh, and it could be on an existing uh, parcel. Is that correct? That is correct. So one of the advantages of ADU construction, it could be, a, by the way, it could be a conversion. It could be a, a garage that's converted. It could be uh, something that's built above a garage. It could be something that's built connected or disconnected to a backyard, uh, or to a house in a backyard, uh, means that the land itself has already been disturbed. So one of the things that, that we try and definitely honor within California and coastal California is land preservation, agricultural land preservation, coastal land preservation. Uh, we have the California Environmental Quality Act that ensures that we are look into all mitigations and all impacts associated, uh, or all impacts and look at what mitigations can be done associated with that. ADUs functionally are built on lands that have already been disturbed and therefore there really are minimal impact. Uh, some people may argue that there could be some parking impacts, there could be a little bit of intensification of use, but realistically, uh, I don't really see it that way. I think it'd be much different to build uh, large scale complexes throughout an area. And these can be harmonized throughout an entire community across various school districts, across various areas throughout, so that there isn't an intensification just within one specific area. It's pretty common when we build affordable housing, it tends to be concentrated on a part of town or two parts of town, which has its own problems associated with that. ADUs, though, harmonize across uh, all types of demographics and socioeconomic areas throughout a county, and I think that that's better all the way around, not just for the people that may be living in them, but also for the community at large as far as its, its impacts are, in essence, spread across, uh, across the entire county. So in terms of having a, an ADU, uh, I, I was kind of checking it out earlier today, and I went to the county website, and it's interesting, if you put in your APN number uh, where you live, uh, it'll tell you uh, a lot of information about ADUs and the size that you can build, and even some other little uh, tabs that'll tell you p potential costs and all those kinds of things. You're probably aware of how that website works. So we developed, the county over the last year has done as much as we can to streamline this process. We wanted to make it faster, easier, and, and uh, cheaper to build these units. We created an ADU toolkit uh, that's now being modeled by other jurisdictions across the state that allows you to go online and look at, at example designs to see, to plug in, as you had mentioned, your parcel number to find out how big it would be to build it, how big you could build it, also how much it would cost for you to do it. What are the county fees associated with it? We've made it an over-the-counter permit, so it's a much more expedited process. I mean, the barriers to these kinds of construction are either excessive fees or regulatory in nature. And so how do we uh, break down those barriers? Well, uh, I actually had something that I brought to the board that was approved that waives all fees for three years associated with the county uh, for anything that's 640 square feet or smaller on these ADUs, recognizing that a, a unit that size, which is typically a one bedroom definition, 640 square feet. Possibly over a garage? Over a garage, yeah. By the way, the cheapest way to do this is to actually convert an existing space. I mean, uh, you could do, uh, uh, or maybe it's a modular. We'll, we'll pass to him. But, <laughs> but it's 640 square feet, uh, you could do pretty cheaply and with the, with, by waiving fees, uh, as the county is, on, on the impact fees that we normally take in with, with development. 
Uh, one of the things we were talking about before the show started is that the county sometimes will subsidize an affordable housing unit up to $250,000 a unit. When you look at affordable housing construction, especially post-redevelopment, so it's gone down significantly, but it's not uncommon on a deed-restricted affordable housing unit, and a deed restriction means somebody, it, only somebody earning a certain percentage of the area median income could move into this unit, 80% or 50%, whatever the definition is. We're subsidizing that at a quarter of a million dollars. So if I, say, charge $25,000 in fees for an ADU, I could get 10 units for the same amount of subsidy versus what I'm paying for one unit. So I think that it realistically is a way to build more units for the same amount of money in subsidy. Uh, it's just a different way of thinking about it. Uh, I don't think cities and counties have thought about it until recently. I'm glad to see that there's people taking the mantle across the street, the, the state as, as uh, my colleague here is, in order to actually get these things built. Hmm, very good. So it sounds like the county is very uh, 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 nicely addressing uh, this crisis uh, uh, with, uh, you know, the, uh, the making, it, making it easier uh, to get through some of the planning, uh, streamlining, shorten some of the time, maybe waive uh, some of the fees. What kind of fees might you be uh, uh, waiving at the, as a, at the county level that you normally would have to pay for a regular unit? Well, there's not a fee that we can't find to charge, I, I find. It. I, so <laughs> there's everything from a plan check fee to a map fee to an address design fee. I mean, there, there's a lot of fees associated with uh, the county process, and, and, and I don't want to I don't want to be glib about it. Some of them are necessary. I mean, there's traffic impact fees and, and, and sewer connection fees and, and recognizing that some of these are also Prop 218 fees that we're going to have to actually charge. But with that said, some of the fees, there is a, public, a compelling public interest in ensuring that there's a various types of housing stock across the county, right? You don't want just a bedroom community. You don't just want a community for the rich. You don't want just a community for one type of, of demographic. So using public funds, or in this case, actually waiving fees in order to ensure that affordable housing can be built, seems like a pretty compelling public interest. And so we've taken this stance that we'll do it for three years, see that if it, if it helps incent the development of ADUs. And I'll say this, since we created the ADU toolkit, making it a streamlined process, since we actually telegraphed that we were going to pass the fee waiver, we've seen applications explode within uh, the county, uh, more than double from last year. I think that that's a, a, a very positive sign as to what the government can do from a regulatory standpoint to help partner uh, with uh, both homeowners and, the, and private industry to help ensure that these things get built. But just to kind of illustrate it for, for those at home, to put it in perspective, you have to earn $75,000 a year to afford an average two-bedroom apartment in Santa Cruz County. Think about that. Mm. I mean, across the country, $75,000 would be seen not just as a good wage, but a great wage. And here, it's considered the definition of poverty in the sense that that's no more than one-third of your income shall go toward housing. Mm -hmm. $75,000 a year, which means that in an agriculture and tourism-based economy, mm -hmm. you're working more than one job to make that happen. Sure. Home ownership is a, a low likelihood at best. So increasing the stock like this through ADUs is, is, a, is an important way to ensure that everybody's got a shot here. Wow. Okay. Uh, in terms of uh, time, uh, you said that there's some uh, some time things that are kind of uh, quicker to get approvals on ADUs. What would let's say the average be uh, for somebody that was trying to just build an ADU, uh, and and they were doing it, you know, from the ground up? It would not without doing uh, the ADUs that we're talking about. We're going to talk about in a moment, which are uh, prefabs. What would you say the difference between approvals uh, would be in terms of timing? So assuming you're not going the, the prefab uh, way, which actually would be a heck of a lot faster, by the way, if you because the design process now is actually one of the longest processes that you're going to go through, not the county process anymore. Oh. Uh, so start to finish including... Well, let's, let's distinguish design and then the county. What, mean, what? Meaning that, that if you're going to hire an architect, you're actually going to do some sort of formal design associated with it. So I would say start okay. to finish, that's probably now a year process. Okay. Uh, where, but a good por part of that is actually hiring somebody to help design it, right? Uh, going back and forth with that person on what it's going to look like. But now you go over to the county and it's functionally an over-the-counter permit. It's not going through an extensive process. You can do most of it online in the sense that you can go through the ADU toolkit and find out uh, how large can it be on, on my uh, unit, what are some sample designs that I might actually be interested in doing, work from those sample designs so that it streamlines the process uh, for the county, etc. Uh, so I would say that if, if you're ready to go, meaning you already have the designs and you're just in the county process, what used to be a multi-year process uh, now in the t is, could be a couple-month process. If you're going through a prefab, I would say you're within a couple-month process from start to finish. 
Isn't there some kind of uh, uh, stipulation uh, through the county that it's got to be either approved or not approved within a certain amount of time, uh, different than, let's say, the regular process for ADUs? So we, we do set a timeline for review from the county. It's uh, within 30 days. Um, I'll, I'll say that, that uh, planning staff has made it clear to me I need to hire them a couple more plan people mm -hmm. uh, because yeah. they're, they're now starting to get swamped. This is a good problem to have, or they're starting yeah. to get swamped with applications associated with it. But if nothing else, it, it telegraphs the community, this is the timeline expectation. We know that the longer we take, the more it actually costs you in construction costs, because right. construction costs are going up basically by the day. So we're interested in getting ADUs built and not being the hindrance to what they were. And I don't think that's traditionally been the way that Santa Cruz County's actually looked at it from a, a regulatory standpoint. So I think we've taken a lot of the red tape out, and now we're just hoping that the community will take us up on doing this. Now. Some people may be concerned about what these will be used for. We've made them deed restricted where they can't be used for vacation rentals, for example. They have to be long-term rentals. Uh, you can't rent out your front house and make it a vacation rental in the back or vice versa. So we know this has to be somebody's primary residence. And sure. we think that that's going to be something that uh, people will continue to support. Okay, good. Um, what has surprised you most about the current crisis that we're in? Uh, as a county supervisor, what have you seen since you've been on the board, and what are you looking at now in terms of where we're going with housing? Well, I, I, that's a good question. I think what surprises me most is how we are probably going to face a complete generation loss in Santa Cruz County because there's no chance for somebody, in essence, between the ages of 18 and 35 to be able to survive here. So I don't know. What I hear from people all the time is that their, their kids or grandkids grew up here, de developed a connection here, went to high school here, went to college. like like you know we all hope our kids may be able to do but had no opportunity to come back they didn't see any hope in coming back and so i don't know what that means for a sense of community and sense of place so what has surprised me most is uh that there's a we're going to lose that generation and b yet there's still a pretty strong sense in some in the community that we should still do nothing and change nothing and and and, and not fight for you know that that group of people mm -hmm. uh, i tell you what when you if you say no to everything, change will manage you as opposed to the other way around. Mm. And what I'm seeing are a lot of homes converting to vacation rentals and second homes, a lot of uh, Silicon Valley money coming in for people that like the weekend experience. That's not a sense of community for Santa Cruz County. And so uh, I think that we have to be willing to say yes to some of these things, and it means being willing to deregulate uh, to the degree possible on things like ADUs. Because if you don't get a chance to start here, um, you won't get a chance to finish here. That's, that's a fact. So I, I mean, I've got a four year old. And I look at it and I say that, but for him inheriting my house, I would have no idea yeah. what job he would have to have here to be able to buy a house like mine yeah. uh, moving forward. Yeah, wow, okay, good. Well, as usual, uh, when you've been on the show, you give such a, a good amount of information that's very usable, and I think everything you're talking about uh, is understandable, and, and you just bring it down to, uh, so that our, our listeners can understand what you're, what's going on in the community. So thank you so much for that. And we will come back to you, um, and. We'll ask you a couple other uh, questions, uh, and one other last one, actually, uh, just about uh, affordable housing and ADUs. And let's go over and let's talk to, uh, to Todd a little bit. Um, you know, first of all, I, I'm always uh, engaged uh, in some way or some level uh, with uh, nonprofits and those uh, organizations that are local that are charity organizations. And um, I want to talk a little bit about what uh, Advantage Homes has been doing and what you did recently uh, in the presence of our local community and uh, in terms of giving to charity. Let's talk about that a little bit. Cause something occurred and you very graciously gave uh, out of your own uh, means to be able to help some people that were in need. Oh, well, <clears throat> Lou, I think um, that's something we're really passionate about. Um, giving back to charity, giving back to the community, being part of the community for over 23 years now and uh, being more born and raised in the area. It's been, uh, it's been great that our business has thrived. So we felt, especially your wife and I, uh, Cindy, we felt when there's an opportunity for us to help, we, we love to jump in and uh, get our hands dirty and see what we can do. Um, there was recently a case, unfortunately, where uh, a family, uh, two 10-year-olds and uncle passed away. And uh, we met with the family and we had thought, uh, well, we were planning on giving him some money to try to help him out, thought that would be the end of it. Uh, before we did that, we wanted to come over to the family's house um, and, and, and talk to them for a couple minutes. And we found out that they didn't have any insurance on the home. Mm. Um, so they said, thank you, Todd, for the, for, for the money, but there's not much we can do with it because we're gonna end up homeless. So um, Cindy and I, we, uh, we didn't even have to talk about it. We just looked at each other and we nodded our heads uh, and we decided, um, 
uh, we wanted to donate a new home for the family nice. uh, it was worth about two hundred thousand uh, dollars and and we felt that uh, that would be the best interest they'd already lost their kids they wouldn't have a place to live and uh, we thought that that's the, that was the opportunity for us to give back and, and, and help the community out wow that's, that's amazing and it shows uh, your heart for the community and it shows uh, some uh, some really uh, roots uh, I think you know in your business when you give those kinds of things and you act like that it shows uh, where you're at, uh, and that's that's amazing. Congratulations for having that heart uh, and doing the kind of things that you, you've been doing. And I think, prop, quite frankly, I think that uh, posturing uh, lends to a lot of your success. Obviously, you're very successful uh, in, in what you do, and and uh, that that goes far. It just shows uh, you know you're willing to to give uh, uh, when there's a need. So that's 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 amazing. Congratulations on that for having that. Let's talk about some of the specifics. Um, now, you have got uh, an opportunity to talk about uh, not only what's happening in Santa Cruz County, but other counties as well. And generally, uh, when, when, it's lo when you're looking to build an ADU unit, uh, and you do the, some of the prefabs, and that's what your, your industry does, and they're, they're gorgeous, open beam ceilings, I mean, they're, just, they're, they're, uh, they're like high-end, they're high-end homes, uh, just that they get built really quick and they're, they're already uh, uh, ready to go out there and, and you're ready to put them together just a few, few weeks rather than months and months that uh, the average, uh, let's say, ADU might take or the average home. Let's talk about that and how does it, how long does it take to get one up uh, and once, once we get the approval and let's say you go to the county, Whatever that time might be, it sounds like Zach, from what you were saying, is from beginning to end, it's going to be very, very short in time that they're going to approve it, and they've got it. Uh, give you a yay or a nay mm -hmm. uh, if the package is complete and you've got everything in place. Uh, but once that happens, how long does it actually take to get an AD unit up with the prefab? Um, well, actually, building at the factory is a very short period of time. Um, right now, obviously, depending on build times, we work with several of the largest factories out there to put them together, build them within the factory between eight to 12 weeks is, uh, mm. is as quick as we can get them in. And then obviously the build time um, on, the, on the lot itself. So. How, how long, let's say on the lot might it take, would you, uh, would you think? I know you, you, you wouldn't do this, but you oversee a lot of it because of your business. Let's say how long would a contractor take compared to a regular ADU? Uh, it, would it take you know, four weeks, six weeks? Normally, how long do they assemble it? Um, well, that's the huge, uh, the huge benefit of, of uh, prefab homes, modular housing, is that the quickness that we can build it and the fact that we don't have to have uh, contractors on site. I mean, a lot of cases where um, a, a stick-built uh, contractor is going to be in your backyard using your restroom for the next year to two years, and obviously, Zach mentioned um, the permit process, obviously, it, it takes longer now. Um, we're really blessed now that a lot of the counties and the cities all over um, they're embracing uh, prefab and modulars, and they feel that, hey, you know what? Uh, we want to make it easier for the modular industry to build these homes, get them out there quicker, and so we can we can shave off at least a year to a year and a half on. Oh, uh, like how long? A year to a year and a half in a lot of cases. Oh, so amazing. we can get the, probably amazing. get it done within maybe six months to eight months in some cases. From what beginning to, let's say, completion uh, in that six-month period, from the time that it's approved, uh, and that's about how long, let's say, you would order uh, you know, all the materials and you pick out all the specifics, uh, at, let's say, at the Santa Cruz office, mm -hmm. and uh, you pick out colors and all that kind of stuff, and then from that point on, it, it, and you're pretty much assuming that everything's been approved already? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and so from that point to completion to actual move-in time mm -hmm. would be six months. Um, yes, so I mean literally once uh, if you are actually able to design the, the product uh, within uh, within our office and actually we're one of the few retailers that you can, can actually see what you're going to build um, at least a variation of it and we have five homes that you can actually see and we actually like to display the product uh, in fact a, a local place here we actually have it displayed in Christmas in the park so it's again the city's embracing um, the ability for us to build these things to be able to have them out there in a, in a quick and short time manner. But again, um, taking about, after once you actually design the home, literally, if you were able to design, if you were actually able to design it, and sometimes it takes maybe one to two weeks to design the home yourself, depending on how quickly you wanna pick out colors and pick out the flooring and pick out the color of your home. Um, if you're done with that, literally in the factory, if you build it right now, it's only gonna take six weeks to eight weeks right now if we could we could build it in the factory. Uh, the only other time obviously we're going to spend is obviously to build a foundation and then obviously have it in, put in your backyard. And then the other things sometimes that get in the way, um, don't be concerned about having to access the property. Uh, we can actually crane the unit in to your backyard if it's, if it's some, some trouble with accessibility or we may need to you know um, knock down a fence and rebuild it, but, uh, but there's a lot of ways we can handle it. So you can come in with let's say units that, that are I should say, uh, um, 
uh, properties that might have a little bit of challenge in getting the unit there, and you can crane them in, and so oh, that's, that, that takes on a whole different, uh, uh, it, it's amazing. So you can put it in places, let's say, in some of the Santa Cruz mountainous areas that might not normally be as accessible for, for these kind of AD units. As long as we can get it down the road, we'll get it into the house. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, very good, mm -hmm. very good. Um, let's talk a little bit about cost. I know there's a tab on the county website that kind of do, does some things with that and, and average cost, and I think it, you, know, you can estimate what you might have and what you might be paying. But let's say if you were just, ha if you had just a, a flat a plat of land and you were gonna bring in an, an 80 unit, a prefab, what would you guess uh, uh, range? Uh, you know, certainly, you know, if you add on things and take off things and size is all gonna come into play. And I think, Zach, you talked a little bit about that depending on uh, the size of the primary uh, unit and then when you're building uh, uh, the, uh, the ADU, then there's a tie-in with how many square feet you can have. And I think you said, you, did you mention, I don't know if you mentioned it here, but it was 1,200 was the maximum square right. feet? Right, so if you have a, a decent amount of size on your lot, then you could go up to 1,200 uh, square feet, which by the way is the size of a lot of houses in Santa Cruz mm -hmm. County. Yeah. So, But <laughs> if you're living on a few acres, 1,200 square feet isn't that big of a deal, but that's the current maximum yeah. size. Realistically, most people are building the 640 square foot-ish units uh, within the urban areas. Okay. So the 600 uh, might be, uh, if it was earmarked, uh, uh, in my mind, it would be for, uh, let's say, over a garage uh, or, or an existing unit. But then we're talking something a little bit different uh, with Todd. We're talking about a, a detached unit, a, a home, uh, that, uh, that you, you would be doing on a, on a flat piece of land. So there's the differential. So you, but you do have a lot more square footage, for sure, uh, on, on a prefab uh, that you're able to uh, to do. Is there a ratio uh, of, let's say, the size of the house, Zach, that you might um, uh, be able to build? Let's say if it's a 5,000 square foot home, does that, is that the, the maximum is 1,200? Or what's the tie-in, do you know? Yeah, we work on lot sizes, actually, uh, because really it yeah. has to do with avail setbacks still, re still exist uh, in this world. So it, it really has to do with the, uh, uh, the lot size. But what, again, what we're finding is if you want the quickest version without doing a prefab, you would do a conversion unit, which is also the cheapest unit, meaning that you would have, by the way, a lot of people are already living in a garage in Santa Cruz County anyway, so it, may, it makes sense to actually make it something more habitable. Uh, but if you're building something on the outside, then the prefab is the quickest way to go, uh, but based on lot sizes, and within Santa Cruz County, there's some pretty tight lot, lot sizes, which also constricts people's ability uh, to build the larger units out back. But the website will calculate that for you, correct? Yes, if you just plug in what your parcel number is, and if you don't know your parcel number, you can put in your address and get your parcel number. Mm -hmm. It'll tell you the maximum size that you would be able to build on your lot. Okay. Um, you know, back to you, Todd. W w would you guess that the original intent, uh, it, you know, was uh, for ADUs to be, uh, we call them uh, granny units, but that, that was kind of for mom and pop to live there as they got older. And we're seeing a, uh, probably less of that and maybe more of the reverse of that, where mom and pop's place uh, you know, ends up being a unit for somebody else, um, and just because of the, you know, the younger people are having a hard time affording, as, as you said, Zach, seventy-five, seventy thousand dollars a year. It's a good income coming out right out of college, but in Santa Cruz County, that's close to poverty level because of the housing is so difficult to. Uh, that that's a challenge. It's so difficult to you know get down. Um, so it, you know, if we're doing a, an AD unit. Um, how does that uh, tie in, and this maybe is a question for Zach, how does that tie in with, let's say, addressing some of uh, uh, the, the, the challenges that we have? Would, let's say, uh, somebody that built an ADU, uh, let's say a, a prefab, a gorgeous home that you guys build uh, and bring out, would that be, would it would be a rental, or would you guess most of those might be used uh, for granny, uh, or, or how, how, what's, what's, what's the usage of ADUs when they're separate uh, and not, let's say, connected to the house? So just people that have spoken to me are mainly uh, parents that want to downsize, that want their young families to be able to move into the front unit. They want okay. to be able to, in essence, give the front unit to their, their daughter, their daughter's husband, and their two young kids. Uh, they, Santa Cruz, when you don't build anything, then you also don't have downsize capabilities, so there's not a natural uh, turnover of homes. Uh, maybe it's a two-story front house and aging in place, they would prefer a single-story ADU unit. Uh, that's been the most common that I've heard are people thinking about retirement years, thinking about mm -hmm. uh, what they can do to, to be able to keep the place and also provide their family with an option uh, up front. But uh, I have heard people just say, uh, I, I just had a woman tell me last week, I, I met my daughter's teacher and she is really, she lives almost two hours away. 
uh, I would love to be able to have an opportunity for somebody like her to be able to live uh, in an ADU. We're considering constructing it and specifically renting it maybe to a teacher that lives locally. So I think that there's also a, a different sense of, um, you, I mean, you could make it an income generating unit. I mean, realistically, it is a way for you to make money while also helping uh, the, the housing stock because by design, either prefab or by just pure size, these are more affordable housing units mm -hmm. than renting an entire home uh, would be. Mm -hmm. on, the, on the macro side though, I think um, all over California, I see a lot of people, what they're trying to do is, um, especially seniors, where they want to keep their, their piece of land. They mm -hmm. don't want to downsize into uh, consider a mobile home park or such. This is a great opportunity for them not to do a reverse mortgage. I think it's a great opportunity uh, for them to end up either living in the granny unit or ADU mm -hmm. unit and mm -hmm. renting out the front unit or vice versa. Now they're able to create an income. Obviously, um, their income is not going to change. And obviously, inflation and, and cost, additional costs, always in, improving and, and, and uh, their ability to live in the area, especially living in Santa Cruz, San Jose, or Silicon Valley, the Bay Area. It's so difficult mm -hmm. to stay living. I mean, I, I, went out to, I went out to dinner the other day. It was just me and my wife, and it was $100. <laughs> and I felt like uh, it was almost like going to McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Um, I think this is just such a great thing that uh, just putting the investment into a property to be able to have that second unit and what Advantage Homes can do where they can put that extra unit and create that extra income for them sure. that they didn't anticipate having an opportunity in the past. Sure. So. Huh, good information. Mm -hmm. You know, statewide, uh, Todd, because you're, you're dealing uh, with, with so many uh, uh, statewide, uh, uh, county uh, statewide issues, um, how do you see uh, our, our county stacking up with what's happening in the rest of the state? I, I see it, and I've done a little research, and it looks like it's stacking up very well. It, it seems like that we're very proactive uh, in getting ADUs built and making, you know, like I say, the, the county website is, is, is very accessible. It's very easy to get in, uh, get an in, in and out of, uh, and, and it's just really encouraging that kind of stuff. Do you see more of that happening statewide, less of that, or do you see us? I think I see us on the cutting edge as a county, and traditionally that's what happens in Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. But what, how are you seeing that stack up? Oh, I'm, I'm excited to see what, uh, what Zach's doing and then Santa Cruz is doing. I mean, I, I'd love for Zach to actually give some input with some of the other counties on getting that, uh, that site on their ability to measure out spaces and tell us how much they can fit because we're spending half of our time going out to lots trying to figure out what can fit on the lot and what they're able to put out there. Can they put it out there? That'll save a lot of our time. If we can shorten up that period of time, uh, that's going to help us tremendously in being able to put more units out there and create a little bit more affordable housing. I mean, that's, that's, that's so what I'm, what I'm hearing you say is that you're not seeing uh, other counties, because you deal in so many counties, being as progressive as what we're doing here in Santa Cruz. Yeah, I have to agree with you. Santa Cruz is, uh, is actually cutting edge. They're actually ahead of the game in other counties. A lot of the other counties is like, well, what's an ADU unit? <laughs> they're asking us, well, they're, they're doing the opposite. They're making it more difficult. So now they're trying to figure out, now, well, let's do our first one. Uh, I just did it in another county. We were the very first, Advantage Homes was the very first company to put a first ADU unit, and it took us several months to do it. But now they said they can streamline it. And again, if they can uh, put something together like what Zach has on their website, then I'm sure their numbers are going to double, triple, you know, and go, go, go sky high. Well, that's good to hear. Mm -hmm. uh, and it doesn't surprise me uh, when these things happen statewide, uh, you know, the good things that are happening. Uh, statewide uh, many times start here in Santa Cruz County and I think the hard work of our county supervisors and planning department uh, I and I think we're just doing a great job as a community to be able to address this issue uh, and I'm glad to hear that you know firsthand from what your real life experiences out there let's talk a couple about a couple other things um, do, do ADUs need their own address uh, or is it the same address or do you like I have, I have a friend that's got a uh, property and I, I don't know I can never figure it out but he put you know his number and then he put an A behind it for one of his other units and I, I wasn't sure if that was a, a separate address or is it required or what was going on with that do they need their own address or are they supposed to have the same address um, yeah generally in the counties that I've do, done a lot of business in you do have um, separate addresses but maybe Zach could, uh, could address that in Santa Cruz because he's more of an expert in the area well, it could go either way. I mean, if, you, if you're using it as a separate detached unit, that's one thing. If it's making it as, an enclo as a, uh, a current conversion, that would be a, a different thing. I also, I'll say that people may be more apt to seek out a, a unique address for it. The parcel's still the same, but, but uh, a unique address for it if it's somebody different living there. I mean, if your intention is yeah. to also make it its own separate rental from just a male perspective, you could okay. uh, do it that way, but it's not a requirement. 
And then how about utilities? What happens uh, on the utilities? Are they separated out? Or let's say you just get one utility bill and you kind of just figure a 60-40 split or 50-50 and... Okay. Well, so so you, this is actually a, a, a very interesting question that the state legislature has actually been dealing with, which is that some of the greatest costs associated with construction of ADUs are how they're considered by utilities. Specifically, are they is it in essence a brand new hookup? Is it, a, is it deemed a remodel under the code? And so you're just adding the same way that you would just be adding a, b a bathroom. Uh, how is it viewed by the fire code? Is it just deemed a remodel or is it a separate unit that needs uh, sprinklers, et cetera? Mm -hmm. We define it as a remodel, which is to say that it's, it, it would be no different than if you were just doing something within the interior of your house, even mm -hmm. if you're building it on the exterior of your house. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are special districts that interpret that differently, though. If you're a special water district, you have currently uh, more flexibility than you may have when the legislature is done with their current session. But uh, my point being that in, in different places, if, it's a, if a city provides its own water, you might find that they're different than if the city has, its own water, uh, has a separate water district on how they view that connection fee, yeah. whether it has to be a separate meter versus it can just be something coming off the existing meter. Okay, very good. Um, you know, we've got a, a fair amount of uh, duplexes and apartment buildings uh, around in Santa Cruz. How does the ADU tie into, let's say, that? Uh, and are there challenges there? Maybe this might be a question for Zach. Um, and, and I think we, you probably addressed this uh, in some other uh, venues, but uh, w w what's your take on that? Well, I mean, they're, they're separate entities, right? I mean, this is for a single family, this is for doing something on a single family uh, parcel. Hmm. It doesn't have to be zoned single family per se. I mean, it could be an agricultural parcel, et cetera, but this isn't for a multifamily uh, component yet under this, under this construct. Yeah. Uh, by the way, most of the, most multifamily uh, units, be it a townhome, uh, or be it an apartment complex, are already maxed out on setbacks anyway. So I mean, mm -hmm. how, where it would be constructed is sort of unclear. Single families are the ones that have traditionally appreciated having a certain yard size that uh, I think could be better utilized, both from an environmental standpoint, from a water standpoint, by the way, mm -hmm. so you don't have these large yawns, a lot large lawns, uh, that you could actually use it as a new housing component on already disturbed land like we talked about at the beginning. Okay, good. Um, will, this is a, a good question. Again, uh, another one for Zach. Will uh, your property taxes increase if you build an ADU? Yeah, well, your, your home's going to be reassessed uh, for a new value. So the answer mm -hmm. to that is, is uh, yes, but so too will your home value significantly, right? I mean, this is mm -hmm. the possibility of either having your own brand new living unit for yourself while your family lives in the front unit or, or maybe a, an income generating rental mm -hmm. that's now bringing in, uh, in Santa Cruz County, it's going to be bringing in uh, something in the thousand to two thousand dollar range, right? That's the reality of, of what rents are in this area. Mm -hmm. uh, and by the way, the number I just gave is below market mm -hmm. on, on, on anything else that size because they tend to be, because uh, you know, most of these two bedrooms are going in the 2500 plus range uh, already locally. So uh, something in, in the ADU size, and the ADUs have kitchens and they're, they're fully contained. Uh, are going for less than it would be if you're renting uh, an apartment of equivalent size in a multi-residential unit. Sounds like it's much more cost-effective tax-wise to have an ADU than, let's say, just go out and build uh, uh, somewhere else uh, with a, a separate a a APN number. But it sounds like that's what I'm hearing from you, that, it would, uh, that you're going to have a different assessment, but it's probably not going to be close to what might have happened if you just went out and built a separate, altogether, uh, by itself unit. I believe that to be uh, the case. I believe that uh, I think it would actually be cost-effective for you to do it for your own. If you were doing it just or if you had no altruism in this and you just wanted to make money on the deal, I think that actually building one of these would actually be something that could keep you in your home. Yeah. Uh, as, the, as Todd was mentioning earlier, a senior that doesn't have any new income coming in, they may actually view this as something that provides income security for them moving forward that allows them to actually stay in their home, which actually serves its own value. Or uh, maybe you, you move into the smaller unit and are now able to rent out the larger unit to a family that needs that kind of housing stock. But either way, I think it creates a turnover of the housing stock that doesn't currently exist within the Bay Area, and secondly, allows people to age in place that wouldn't be able to do so otherwise. Huh. There are a lot of advantages. Um, Todd, back to you. Uh, wh what kind of uh, advantages are you seeing from the commercial side of it for ADUs? What are you hearing from you know, uh, your clientele uh, that have had them for you know, some time? Uh, and, and certainly this is new, but you know, for, I guess, be a short period of time. Um, what, what are you hearing in terms of advantages uh, as opposed to doing something else uh, with the same outcome or similar outcome? 
Well, Lou, if you keep on saying the word advantage, then it's going to definitely benefit me even more. <laughs> <laughs> so, Where did I get that word from? <laughs> um, Do so, the plug. Go on. <laughs> okay. Advantage homes. Um, so uh, going back to your question, uh, definitely the modular manufactured housing side is huge. Um, uh, the markets uh, really changed um, the thought process of the product. I mean, I think most people thought of it more as uh, trailers or something like that, uh, that mold. Um, but in these days, I, it's, it's migrated into um, hotels. It's migrated into um, luxury housing. I mean, not just going on the modular side and, and ADU side. We're talking about now where people, instead of doing a stick-built home, they're building million-dollar, two-million-dollar homes that are manufactured at, at the factory. Nice. And they want to make it modular. What's really exciting is that we, we're definitely, Zach probably agree to this, um, we're limited on skilled labor these days. It's very difficult for us to find skilled labor. So to even find someone to do the job properly is very difficult. So now with, uh, with modular building and prefabs, we're finding uh, large companies jumping on the bandwagon, the Amazons, um, the uh, Marriott's. Marriott has committed to over 10% of their new hotels to be built modular. So you're talking about stackable boxes within a factory being built, and now they're shaving off a year, two years, three years build time they're, they're able to get the profit down. You have uh, places like Sacramento who already have hotels that are already built modular style. So it's exciting to see, um, to be able to build these in the factory and not have to rely so heavily on skilled labor, cut down the, cut, cut down the period of time. And in some cases, actually, the, um, the type of uh, material that we build, the product itself is better than stick built. I mean, we use kiln dried wood. Uh, where, What's kiln drive? What is that? Oh, well, it's, it's wood that's already pre-treated and designed to handle wet weather. Oh, it's actually, uh, okay. actually, it's already pre-treated, so um, it's actually better than a stick built. Imagine you building the stick built home, how many times it's going to rain within a year to two years, and, and manufactured homes are already done, and on top of that, it's already built within a factory under, uh, inside, so you don't have to worry about any of the elements affecting the build. So it's fantastic that, you know, hey, if it, it's a larger build like a hotel sure. or um, a lot of modules uh, where it's a large luxury home where they can be as large as 2,000, 3,000 square feet where you don't have to worry about the elements hitting it. Um, it's going to be a better quality and you're going to have a consistent product. They order from the same, um, same distributors, the same suppliers. So if you run out of material, you're not getting a different type of material. They're ordering it in huge bulk. So sure. they're able to put the same product out there, consistent, and now you're going to get a more consistent product when it comes to your lot. So I think the whole idea of, of modular being, I think it's the, wave, the next wave, uh, the next generation. This is how we're going to build all of our housing. It's not just right now to get it done quickly. Uh, as we run out of skilled labor, as we have more difficult finding laborers out there, I think this is going to be the next step. And actually, uh, I've actually been involved with some of the factories. They're actually going to do some robotics uh, within the factory to huh. even make it more efficient uh -huh. and being able to make it built even faster. So it's wow. really exciting for me to kind of see the advancement within the factories and within the industry. And you can see the McDonald's and the Burger Kings now being built because they're not planning on having it built there and be there for 30, 40, 50 years. They're tearing it down within 10, 15 years because the design is kind of either flawed or, or, or they want to change and have a new style. So now with this, it's more affordable for them to do it and they can get it done faster. These, these products, though, are designed to last as long as a home, though, uh, it just for sure. And you have the same quality there. They go up quicker. Uh, they're more cost effective. Uh, certainly, our county is uh, much more inclined to uh, make things streamlined and go quicker uh, and, and some waivers and some fees and things like that. So I think we're going to see a lot more of this kind of stuff happening in Santa Cruz County, uh, even more than we have up to this point. And certainly, again, the buzz right now is when I'm talking to just friends when we're at church or I see people on the street or in my business, they are talking about ADUs and they're just, everybody says, they're gorgeous. You know, they're just a, a different type of, uh, of home than we've been used to. Um, and uh, and I, I certainly am glad that we can talk about, you know, the particular details. Uh, what kind of questions, uh, Todd, would you guess that might be uh, some of the challenges that are misconceptions about uh, ADU and let's say modular homes that you might uh, like to talk about? I know people have misconceptions about a lot of stuff, but what, what, in particular, what are the challenges that people think they should be cautious about with this that maybe aren't that big of a deal? Um, that's a great question, Lou. I mean, I think it goes back to the very first uh, uh, thing that you mentioned is that how surprised. I mean, as far as um, people, aren't familiar with the product, so they assume it's, uh, it's inferior. They assume it's, uh, it's lower. 
in some cases, some of these uh, manufactured modular homes, they're built better than some of the, the top uh, builders out there. Yeah. Uh, again, they have uh, certain restrictions. They have actually more inspections that are done to modular homes than for stick build. They, mm -hmm. Before they even leave the factory, they get inspected twice and they have someone full-time on site to continually inspect it as it goes down the line. Mm -hmm. So I think in a lot of ways, you get a lot more consistency, you get a lot more uh, bang for your buck. But going back to your question about what are the misconceptions, I think that, uh, again, um, that it's not as nice a product. And like I said, 95% of the people that come in, you wouldn't be able to tell it's a different, different than, than a stick built home. Um, in fact, some people say it's even nicer. So we get compliments all day long. So the other misconceptions, obviously, is that uh, the type of material that we use, is it a different type of material than stick build? We use the same material. In fact, like I told you about kiln dried wood, mm -hmm. a lot of times stick builders don't use that. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's a lot more expensive. Mm -hmm. But again, because uh, we, we're, they're held to a higher, higher level within the factory, mm -hmm. they actually use better, better uh, consistent material. So uh, those are the main things. Other than that, I think uh, the misconceptions are that uh, they don't last, like you had said. But I've seen the product myself, being in the business for over 23 years, I've seen the product uh, last, I've sold homes that are 1960s, that are in great condition. Mm -hmm. So um, the homes stack up, they, they, they last a long time. It's all about upkeep of the product and trying to keep your home nice. As long as you take good care of it, it's going to last you a lifetime. Can you do the kinds of things that you would do in, let's say, a, a stick built, uh, like have porches and uh, things like that? And, and, and uh, are there any disadvantages that you can think of? Uh, it sounds like you've got a beautiful product here, and we've got the, the, the perfect timing on this for our community. Uh, they're just open for it, and, and you know it's it's happening, and it's it's it's, it's happening quickly. Um, but are there any any disadvantages that you can think of that are real? Uh, any challenges at all? And how would you uh, maybe you can talk about one or, or two, and how would you uh, address those challenges? I think you had, we talked about it briefly on uh, accessibility. Uh, that would be the only thing to make sure that we're able to be able to drive it up uh, okay. to the to the property. Okay. And if you're talking about a, a single lane road. Um, then obviously we're going to have some difficulty there. But if it's on the lot itself, there's a many, many ways we can handle it. Uh, obviously, we talked about cranes. We've yeah. been up, obviously, uh, taking down a fence. Yeah. Um, so I, I really can't see uh, too many disadvantages. Um, I hate to use the word again. Advan disadvantages to um, not using, uh, not building a manufactured housing. I think uh, modular homes are the wave of the future. I think that uh, between saving the time, um, being able to um, have less people involved in the actual building process. Gosh, it's tough for me to, to, to say. I, the only thing I can think of is maybe um, aesthetically it, it looks a little bit different on the exterior, but that can be remedied by you know, adding stucco or whatever other sure. type of treatments on the exterior. Sure. So there's so many other ways to remedy any, anything that you could think of that would be a detraction. I mean, I, 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 think, uh, I think it's a great product. Excellent. Well, I, uh, it, it's amazing when we do these shows um, that uh, when we get, I get the six-minute mark, you know, and, and we're close to that right now. Uh, so if we can start uh, with you, Zach, and maybe you can leave us with a couple minutes uh, of what you'd like our listening audience to remember from this show, and uh, certainly the expertise that you bring in is, is tremendous, um, and something that somebody will, will want to remember, if you can just kind of give us some closure on tonight's show from your perspective. I think the fundamental takeaway is that uh, we're, we're really at a defining moment, I think, in the state as far as how housing prices are impacting uh, every facet of the economy here in the state, which, by the way, is doing great, which should tell you something, that yeah, if yeah. people are struggling now in a great economy, just imagine what will happen when we flip this coin yeah. uh, to the inevitable recession. So we need to be open uh, to change in regards to allowing for especially more affordable housing to be built uh, throughout the state. And the fastest, easiest, and quickest way to do it is through accessory dwelling units. Um, and I think that if people have never considered constructing one, they should at least look into the process. I mean, it doesn't cost anything or take a whole lot of time to go online and uh, look at it at the county. But also to understand that, that it takes a long time uh, to build housing. I mean, it just does, and we're in a crisis now. And uh, even if, and this is probably the fastest way to construct something, and it's still going to take uh, somewhere between a lot of months to potentially a couple of years, depending upon the process that you go through. So we're not going to be getting through this process very quickly, but if we do nothing, I guarantee you we'll be worse off than we currently are. Mm -hmm. uh, so 
uh, for the viewers at home, just give elected officials uh, space that are trying to solve these problems, understand the construct of what we're dealing with, and uh, help us understand uh, the limits of where you're willing to go in order to ensure that, that everybody gets a fair shake within our community. I think that at least in Santa Cruz County, a very progressive community, a community that cares about each other, uh, it would be my hope that people would be uh, supportive of these kinds of efforts that we're doing at the county level and some of the local cities are doing to do exactly that, uh, to give uh, people's kids and grandkids a shot, nurses, teachers, firefighters. I mean, they're, they're used a lot in some respects as the straw man, but the reality is, is true. I mean, people are driving three hours to work here mm. at the Santa Cruz Police Department. Uh, that's not a community, right? That's not the definition of a community. And, and, a, and a teacher that's making thirty to $40,000 a year can't afford yeah. Uh, really anything. Yeah. So we have a responsibility to do something about it, and I think that this is one of the fastest ways to do it, and so yeah. I'm hopeful that people will be open to that. Excellent. Thank you, Zach. Thank, thanks for uh, bringing that summary uh, to such a nice conclusion. And, and Todd, a any last uh, comments? We're, we're actually a couple more minutes, but certainly. Um, no, I, I think we've touched on a lot of the, the ideas. I, I'm just excited that um, we finally have been able to embrace modular housing, sure. and I think that uh, uh, this is uh, the one way to keep, I have some fr close friends and family that wanted to move out of the area and then they never really thought about modular housing. And now that that came into their mind, they actually were able to stay in the area just yeah. because they, they thought, hey, I could live in a manufactured home or a modular home um, rather than paying an absorbent amount uh, renting or, or not being able to purchase. And sure. uh, now that I still have my friends <laughs> in the yeah. area, we can still go have dinner. And so I, I, if I could say something to the viewers, I'd, I'd love for everyone to at least check it out and uh, take a look at the product. Uh, please come to go to take a look at advantagehomes.com. And uh, you have some virtual tours there where you can see. You'll be very, very surprised at what you see when you give when us you the go. website and give us the phone number. Again, uh, advantagehomes.com, www.advantagehomes.com. Uh, -E and our phone number is uh, 408. I'm um, sorry, actually, our Santa Cruz number. You'll find uh, the phone number on the website. So you can go on there. I actually don't have it off the top of my head. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. <laughs> That's okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Well, you've got a lot of offices and a lot, 15 offices, so I'm sure. That's <laughs> <laughs> so, well, thank you, gentlemen, for, for being here this evening. I think this has been one of the best shows, and thank you so much. And thank you uh, for the listening audience for coming to Let's Talk with Lou and being our guest this evening, because truly, we uh, do this show for you. So thank you so much for everything you do, and let me know at LJ, uh, LJ Tuosto at AOL.com for future shows, and I'd be glad to do a show that it's uh, that's something that you'd like to have. And uh, gentlemen, uh, as usual, uh, you know, you've been great guests and what great information. Thank you so much for being here. So, thank you. My pleasure. Thanks, yeah, Lou. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Glad, glad. Thank you. Yeah, 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 definitely. Very good. Glad, glad you guys enjoyed it. Appreciate it. Yeah.